And I did fix camera angle and a little bit of lighting because I think there might be a thunderstorm happening outside and you know, I usually rely on natural lighting. And have no fear, if there's a thunderstorm, I don't care. You know why? Because everything's battery powered. Let's just go there. Okay, so what I'm trying to talk about today is again, my Huawei phone. I can't even say that right. Huawei? Huawei, okay. So this is my cute little lock screen. Can you see? Let me explain. One of my biggest and strongest skills that I had when I was in college and that my teachers would all, you know, reinforce and tell me I should, you know, use that as my strength as my ability to take, you know, technological words and put them in everyday words for everyday people to understand. There is a reason for that. Because when I went to college, when I took that class, I knew nothing. I mean, I, I knew things. I loved gadgets. I loved putting them together. But, but did I? No, I didn't. I took the class because my friend Pat, we miss him, suggested anything sold me on it, how much I would love it. So when I learned everything, I mean, yes, I learned proper terms and what they did, but I'm not the type of person, you know, so I would always answer back in everyday words, oh, you mean it does this because of this. So my analogies are very people friendly <laughs> and I had a hard time, I mean, I had to learn the real words. But wait, I have to put something else in here that I started earlier. Why is it my fault that people weren't respecting me? I have to put that out there. Yes, I look like this. And when I'm talking on Facebook, you know, all those people who've never met me, all they see is my profile picture. And everybody picks their best picture for their profile picture. Yes, that, that's, you know what we do. So all they get is a picture of me with a lot of makeup and if they do look up the few things that are public is usually you know nail stuff and more makeup and glitter of some sort. I, I don't fit the mold and the fact that again I use everyday words instead of the real technical words make me sound like I don't have a clue about what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about, but the problem is me. The problem isn't you. I don't express myself in a way that someone else in the same level of knowledge would express themselves. So one, I therefore sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. And two, again, most people who, you know, have their heads and an ATM machine with grease and, and dust, because money dust is the worst. I mean, but you know, on the floor being dirty, do they usually? No. Did I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. So, what I'm trying to say is, I know, okay, if you don't want to trust me, don't. But if you do, please stay tuned. Just stay tuned, okay? I'm going to get to the point about how the Huawei phone, and I mean this one in particular, this brand in particular, just saved me from a potentially bad catastrophe. And it does tie into why the Americans are afraid of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, I took a drink of water and, and, and it fell. What else? I can't do anything about it. They're just there. Let's move on. So, how does the Huawei keep surprising me all the time? It does. One, we live in North America, and again, these brands are illegal in the United States. Like I just said, while I'm researching all of this, I found an article written from February of this year, 2018, where the FBI warns Americans to not use this brand and the other brand, I believe it's like the ZTE because of what makes it so special, which is their own software called the EMUI. 
Now, EMUI, I happen to have version 8.1, which is the latest one. It's an AI, as in an artificial intelligence, build on top of Android. So, the word artificial intelligence is enough to scare the Americans into thinking that the Chinese are spying on them. Now, I don't have an opinion on that, and personally, I don't care. Do you want to spy on me buying makeup and nail products and glitter? Pfft, have a ball. Go for it. I don't care. And that's what someone was trying to do. And it saved me from it. So, thinking that this EMUI is trying to spy on me, kind of doesn't make sense. Because it just saved me. And let me explain. So first, I am going to explain a little bit of the EMUI artificial intelligence and why it's in there. Why did they decide to make one? So they started with Android. So that's the difference between Android and iPhone and Windows. Android is called open source. And that open source simply means that the code for it is available to anyone that knows how to find it. It's not hidden, it's not proprietary. So iPhone code is proprietary. You cannot find the code unless you pay for it or you learn how to do it. Same thing for Windows. Now Windows is partly open source because they didn't have a choice, but that's another story. But Android itself is completely open sourced and it has a command prompt. So if anybody out there has watched the movie Blacklist, it's called the one with, um, you know, the Hemsworth guy from Australia. Like, not the one with Miley Cyrus, but the older brother. I don't know. Sorry, I don't care. Anyway, he was in that movie where he, he was a hacker and he needed to get into something and hack it. And he, he's walking around this city. I believe he's in somewhere in Japan or something. And he's asking everybody for their cell phone. Is it an Android? Is it an Android? And then finally, somebody says yes. And he takes the phone because an Android has a command problem. And with the command prompt, you can pretty much do anything, if you know how. Is that a bad thing? It could be. could not be. It, it all depends on what your intentions are. And, again, if you want to do bad things with a command prompt, most probably you're going to get caught, except for the few people that we call black hats that are smart enough to hide their traces. There's a few of them out there in the world, but there's a lot less of them than you think. Stop watching too much TV. Alright, on to the good part. <laughs> on to the good part, I know. So what they did with the EMUI is that they took the Android Nugget, that's what it's called, and in this case it happens to be the Oreo platform, which is the latest version of Android. And if anybody out there has ever noticed, Android likes to name every single version of their software after desserts. There used to be Jelly Bean, there was Cupcakes, this one's Oreo. I don't know. It's just cute. They're having fun. You can name things whatever you want. So that's another little fun thing about being a programmer. We're a bunch of nerds, okay? We have fun in our own way. So what they did at QIA with the EMUI is, again, they take the base from Android, and in this case, it happens to be Oreo. They take the base code of it because they have access. It's open source. And then they add their own on top of it, which is considered the EMUI, which, again, is an artificial intelligence part of it. And then they work in combination together. So for someone who wants to use a QI, who has no idea about programming or whatnot, you're just a regular everyday person, you're not necessarily going to notice the difference when it comes to how the software works as per another Android, which is fine, because this works in the background. Now, what is it doing in the background? It's doing amazing things. As artificial intelligence, not as, you know, going to become another person and talk to you. It's, it's not Siri. You can't have conversations with it, all right? You can't have, you know, the Google Assistant, but it's, it's still, you know, it's not another person. It evaluates what you do. It's constantly running in the background and it looks at things. So over time, your phone becomes 
better performance wise than when you first buy it. I know, weird, right? Because usually when you buy a phone, the battery, everything kind of keeps going and bogging up until, you know, you need an upgrade because well, it's just not really performing very well. These ones do the opposite. Hello? Yes? Please, keep doing it. So that's what it does. And it does all sorts of other things as well where it, it helps, you know, enhance your pictures. It helps all sorts of other things. And those are, you know, the surface part of the MUI. But the underneath part of it, again, is pretty much battery and performance. And to break it down, what it does is it looks at what apps you use the most. It evaluates all that stuff for time-wise. So if you are someone that always, you know, has a lunch break at the same time and you go on, you do your social media on your breaks and after work and whatnot, it's going to notice that. It pays attention. So over time, it learns your habits and it will work for you. What it does, again, is it knows, okay, the person's going on lunch in half an hour. Let's start shutting down the things that they don't use so that we can send all the performance into the Facebook and the Instagram and the whatever social apps you use during your one hour so they can have optimal performance because they never use camera during lunch. This person isn't someone who takes a picture of every single meal they eat. So let's shut down camera as much as we can and give all that power to Facebook processing. In a nutshell, that's what it does. I know that might have sounded a little scary. Don't let it scare you. I'm going to now tell you how it's actually a good thing and how it saved me. So first, this thing is great because it has facial recognition. So flip it up, it sees me, it's open. And yeah, I have another unicorn back there, obviously. Um, so that's great in my case. You know, I sometimes, you know, do my nails and I, I end up with good results even though it takes me like six hours. Mostly because I'm busy watching YouTube and other stuff while I'm doing it. And sometimes I need to put it on pause and that's okay. Cause it'll work and the facial recognition for me is great. My hands are busy, I'm doing my nails. All I gotta do is look at it. Bam, my YouTube's playing again. And you can actually have YouTube playing the app closed. I know, isn't that cool? Don't tell anybody that. It's a secret. Alright, so why is this the awesomest thing ever? Well, you can go into modes now. Don't go into these modes if you don't know what you're doing. I do. Again, I know. Some people don't believe me, but that's okay. That's the point. Yes, I do know what I'm doing. Shh. Don't tell people. I think it's like my secret power. Maybe. There's a thing in Hawaii phones. Now it, it may be present in, in other, but I don't believe so. Where you can actually run your own debugger. So what happened with this phone? I bought it on June 2nd and around July 20th, my Wi-Fi could not work. I could not download more than like three megs per second and my speed at my house is 70. My other phone, you know, my older one before, turned it on, it did fine. Everything other in my house that runs on Wi-Fi did fine, it was the phone. Brought it down to where I bought it, they tested, they had the same thing, and then they sent it out to repair. I did call that company and tell them that they should probably find a different company to do their repairs because I don't know what the heck they did but they didn't do anything because I just found it but not the point um but when I got it back it was still working I got enough download I mean the speed was only 30 megabytes of download but I mean it's my cell phone and it's just me that is still okay all right I'm not gonna complain and then last night again I couldn't even get one meg of download and then I was like, okay, I've had enough. So I looked through it, and I run the debugger program. 
Now the debugger program comes up in HTML. All this code, right? All this. Now, again, yes. The one thing that I did not pass in college, it's the only thing missing for me to get my diploma, is senior C++. That doesn't mean that I can't read code. It just means I can't write it. So, to anybody out there who has even an inclination of what code is, or has written it, or does this for a living, you're going to know what I say when syntax is everything. And that's where I get caught up in. And for those of you who don't know, coding is not easy. It's something that for some people just comes naturally. For me, it didn't. And for the whole, you know, artificial intelligence thing, yes, it's a thing, but, you know, a computer can only know what we tell it. And that's where programming comes in. So you tell it how to do everything, and it's pretty amazing with what you can actually do with a computer. Programming-wise, you can, you know, you can do a bunch of things. But if you don't write it the way that it wants it to be written, it's not going to work, which comes in syntax, which means that you can write 3,000 lines of code. And 3,000 lines of code is actually pretty much nothing when it comes to something important. And if in those 3,000 lines you missed one comma at the wrong spot, it won't work. Everything else is perfectly fine. But you missed one comma or one bracket, nothing will work. Nothing will work. And I couldn't find that one little bracket thing. So for me, that was my bug up. But it doesn't mean that I can't understand when I read it. So I read my debugger code. So I'm reading, and then I'm realizing it's protecting me. Something happened on June 12th, because I can see it in here. And that's why I'm saying that, what did that other company do when they said they fixed my phone? Because I read the report and they cleared everything. How can you clear everything when I can see that something happened on July 12th and I sent it? No. How can you have cleared everything when I can see in, in this report that I did last night, August 13th, that tells me that the incident happened on June 12th and you supposedly cleaned it on July 20th? I don't know. Again, I'm not very good with dates. That's not my strong suit. But I do know that doesn't make sense. But we're going to move on to the important part. So now that I know that something happened on June 12th. I keep reading. Now, there's a lot of code and it's a lot to go through. But unfortunately, for the other person, and fortunately for me, I know enough to understand exactly what happened. Because there's a part where it talks about my firewall and packets being sent and whatnot. So that's pretty much how the internet works. You send something out there and packets, and then it comes back. And there's always a one or a zero. Everything in the programming world is one and zeros. Anybody who's watched The Matrix, the ones and zeros that go everywhere, technically that's how the core of the internet and any electronic works, ones and zeros. And then you put them all together and you get different things. Okay, getting complicated. I don't wanna complicate you. So when I was reading this, I could tell that on certain dates, certain times, and again, I notice patterns, so I noticed that, you know, they all kind of happen on this kind of the same date. And the phone was protecting me. So at certain times, I could see that I had, in the span of 20 minutes, over 4,000 packets being rejected. As in, somebody is asking my phone to send them things without my permission, underneath everything. So yes, there's a virus in there, or, you know, or a Trojan horse, or whatever you want to call it, right? There's something in there. And I did it on June 12th. I put it on there, because I have the bug report. So that's why my Wi-Fi kept slowing down, because it was protecting me. And every time that it had like 4,000 packets that it was refusing to send out, 
because it was protecting my information, it would stay in the cache or the cache, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the cache. Whatever. I'm French, okay? It would just stay there. So that's a little memory part for the Wi Fi. So after a while, it got full. So simply put, my Wi Fi memory was just full. It was full of those packets that it was refusing to send out because it recognized that it was not something I wanted to do. It was part of the settings. Um, maybe I helped those settings though because I did go into the settings, but I think it would do this for everybody because it seems to be um, built in because I again, I can see the kernel version and all that whatnot, which means it's the phone itself that does that. So when I sent it, you know, they cleared the Wi-Fi memory. I can see that again because the bug report tells me every single thing my phone has done since I got it. There was a lot of things to go through. So they cleared it. So when I got it back, that's why my Wi-Fi was better. And then it sucked last night. Again, I looked at it. Same pattern. And it was actually holding on to like 20 something packets from like one night. So by clearing all that, I looked into it and then I started thinking, what the heck did I do on July 12th? Where did I go? I'm usually very picky. I, you know, I don't go on sites that don't have certifications, you know. And why is it only affecting my phone? My other devices don't have this because I checked. It happens to be from POF. I decided to maybe try putting a profile out there again to see if I wanted to meet someone. And this person, unfortunately, I don't know who they are. And I could probably try it. I'm not, I don't have the time. I don't care. But it is sad because they were pretending to be someone I work with. And to prove that, they sent me photos of the person they pretended to be. And in one of those photos happened to be, what is the problem? So there's two messages here. One, Huawei is going to protect your butt. So if you want a good phone that can have the same specs and do all the same cool stuff as an iPhone X for half the price, I'll highly suggest to go Huawei P20. I have the light version because I'm broke and it still outbeats anything else. In my opinion, okay? My opinion. It saved my butt. Second message out there is be careful with what you download. I know this message is out there a lot. And even the most of careful people can get caught. I did. And I have all the settings that I should have. So sometimes they happen and how to protect yourself more than, I don't, don't know. I can't explain more than that. But the one tip that I keep trying to tell family members who, you know, do what you want family members. Anybody running Windows 10 or more or anybody that has an Android with Oreo or more, which is the latest version, I think it's 8.0. If you want to know uh, what you're running and you're not sure, message me. I'll tell you how to find it. It's not that hard. Some phones can't upgrade this high, not the point. My point is, is that Windows 10 and any phone, Android, I think, you know, six and up, they have a built-in Various. They have a built-in, you know, don't go paying McCaffrey. Don't don't go paying for antivirus, anti whatever. Don't. It's built in. You already have one. That's what Windows updates are for. Yes, sometimes things get through. And when those things get through, Windows will write a packet patch. And it's called updates. So if you update your computer and you update your phone. You don't need to pay a lot of money to have anything because it's going to do it on a bite side. 
And if you want extra protection, there's free things. You can get free ones. Get the free version. It does enough that you need to do. And if you happen to be the type of person that actually does need something higher, you know enough about computers to actually know where to go and what to do. You, you know, if you know that you need something more than what's already there, you know enough about computers that you don't need to hear this part from me. Future Sean here. I'm currently editing what you're just watching. And I just got a call from the store. The salesperson at the store called to let me know about the complaint I placed last night. But not really. You just wanted to tell me what the company actually did. Now I have a page, okay? Apparently, the company, now, so they say now, compared my phone to their demo Huawei Pro 20 Lite. And mine tested better than theirs. So they figured there's nothing wrong with it. And they sent it back to me. That's not what this report says. Yeah. So, here's the report. I really wish I could tell you the name of the company, but I might get in trouble. It says, work performed. Detect no faults found. Alright, I guess so. Performed. Reset the settings to factory default. One, I can just, again, prove in this whole thing they didn't. And he just called to tell me that that's not what they did. They just compared it to another phone. They're lying. Diagnostic test has qualified device to be fully operational within manufacturer specifications and doesn't exhibit reported malfunctions. Yeah, I know. And then whatever repair code 109 and 136 in this company's thing, they did that too. Now, all they did was clear my Wi-Fi memory cache. That's all. I know. Again, because my debug report tells me exactly what he just said. They did. I can see that. It also says um, condition. Now, I did call them, okay? Because when you get this, this, this paper, it says that um, to report discrepancies with this paper, I only have 24 hours after receiving it. And as their website or a phone number. If you call the phone number, it tells you to go to the website. So in the website, I filled in, you know, a few things. And I also talked about the condition. It says condition, minor scratches. Can you read that? I would like for them to find a scratch on that phone. Find it. If you can find it, I'll give you a million dollars. It's a screen protector. It's always been in a case. I'm an electrical stuff nerd. I take care of my stuff. If you can find a scratch on there, please show me. It doesn't exist. But they write minor scratch to save their butts. So no, I'm not very happy. However, do I have a choice? Can I go with another company? No. But basically, anybody out there, I feel bad for you. I have the knowledge and I figured this out. So all of you are out there that, you know, there's, there's only, you know, so many companies here in New Brunswick that you can get any kind of, you know, telecommunication services from. So if you feel like you're being lied to and cheated out of something, you probably are. And you can't do anything about it. Nothing. You're stuck with it.